The first thing to do today is to finish the four figures for our Keith Haring style self-portrait. So if you haven't already done so, you are going to draw your figure as large as you can on your colorful paper and then outline it with your black marker. Remember, be very careful not to let your marker smear under your hand and don't be afraid to lay the marker sort of on its side so that you can get the big thick line that Keith Haring was sort of famous for. So I'm just gonna keep going until my entire figure is outlined with no pencil showing. Now that our figure is traced, it is ready to cut out. When you cut, we are not going to get close to the black outline. We don't wanna cut any of that off at all. We're actually gonna leave just a little bit of colorful paper around the edge of our figure, sort of like this. Also, if you have any tricky areas where you don't have very much space in between the different parts of your figure, don't cut down in there. Just leave it all one solid piece. Once you have all four figures cut out, the next step is to lay them out on a large white sheet of paper in a design and a layout that you think looks good. After you have your layout the way you like it, you're gonna take a pencil and very carefully and lightly trace around each figure so that you know where it goes. Once you have traced all four figures, we're gonna start filling in the space around our figures with different symbols and lines. So this is a really great chance for you to add more symbols about yourself that you couldn't figure out how to do with a person figure. For example, one of my hobbies is watching movies, but I couldn't really figure out a good way to draw a person watching a movie. So I'm going to just include one of Keith Haring's famous TV screens in my background here as one of my symbols. So of course, whatever my symbols are, I'm trying to keep them simple, just like Keith Haring's style. And I'm going to add as many different symbols as I can around my figures. Once you have filled all of your big empty areas with more symbols, we can take our black marker and once again start outlining all of our pencil lines. Now you can outline all of your lines, but don't do the outlines of your figure. These are not going to actually stay on the project. It's just a placeholder so that we know where our figures are going to get glued on later. So you don't need to trace that. We're just going to trace all of the extra symbols that we've done. Now in the even smaller spaces around our symbols, we get to fill this with creative line designs. So think about all of the different kinds of lines you know. Zigzag, maybe some straight lines that repeat, maybe some wavy lines. And I'm trying not to have my lines touch. I don't want them to overlap and get like too busy and crazy, but I do wanna to try to fill any empty areas without them touching. During, during this part, it is really important not to drag your hand because we have a lot of lines going on and there's not a lot of empty white space. So we really need to make sure that we keep our hand away from the wet marker. I'm gonna double check my paper and make sure there's no spaces that need just a little bit of filling in. You can always use some of Keith Haring's famous little short lines in any little medium sized areas. And then the last step is to very carefully erase any pencil lines that are left over, but make sure that your marker is dry before you do that so that you don't smudge any of the black lines.